Welcome back to my walkthrough and the final battle of the first half of the game, Conflict in the Holy Tomb. Now there are some spoilers, so I'm going to skip over this scene. And I won't draw too much attention to the final opponent, but you'll probably figure out who it is through this video. So if you want to avoid spoilers, I would not look at this video. You have been warned. I mean, if you've been following along with my videos, thank you so much. But if you haven't finished the game at this point and you're just trying to sneak a peek at what's ahead, I'd probably skip this if you want to avoid spoilers of any kind. You have been warned. You have been warned. Now you're going to start this battle with only nine units. And depending on your professor level, you can set as many ad adju adjutants. Adjutants as you want. I cannot pronounce that word. Whatever. Now, I'll show the map again, and again, there are going to be lots of spoilers, so please keep it open up. There are a lot of enemies here, as you can expect. And a lot. So you've got a couple of beasts, or monsters, I should say. A lot of enemies, and a lot of tombs. Your nine characters will be somewhat spread out. Obviously, Byleth will be the middle, and your Character choices will be largely, you know, one to each side. Now, I've got the Black Eagle's house, but I'm still using Ingrid and Lysithia because they're some of my favorite characters in the other houses. Now, so that's settled. Everyone's got their items equipped. Let's begin the fight. Your objective here, defeat the enemy commander or all of your units fall in battle. Now, to avoid spoilers, I, as much as possible, I'm not going to go over who the enemy commander is. But long story short, you've got a lot of units. If you absolutely need to and you're at that point in the game, make a break line to the enemy commander. In this battle, your enemies, as has just been hinted at the beginning of the game, will now start approaching these uh, tomb-like things. Yeah, there'll be a crest stone on these, uh, I guess, tombs? Anyway... The enemies will start trying to A, get to these crest stones, break them open, get one, and then flee. Part of your objective, if you cannot rush the enemy commander, is to stop as many of these crest stones from leaving as much as possible. If you can, it's a completely optional, but you should, you'll earn a much better reward at the end if you do. So I'm going to play as if I can stop these units because I can't. I would like to. Again, I know my characters are overpowered, but because I'm playing on normal, and this is casual because I am a scrub, so <laughs> don't judge me. Well, or or do. I don't really I don't really mind either way. Now, the important thing to note here is that these tombs, as annoying as they are, do constitute some sort of terrain, which means you can't pass over them. You're gonna have to go through the sides. Only a fool challenges me. Have it. Ferdinand, wait. I will get the victory. I will not be stopped. Enemies will largely ignore you on their way. Leave it to me. To the tombs. And the reason why that is important is because that means their focus is less on you. That's my and more on getting the crest stones which means if you don't provoke them you can buy yourself a little bit of time stay focused now this grave in the center right here makes it you think oh i can just charge straight in you can't you're going to have to take some steps to the side each battle a chance to grow you fought well Now you'll start to see some of the crest stones being taken by the people on the side. Now, something to note is that if they have a crest stone, they'll have an item symbol next to them. Which is really helpful for telling, okay, who's got what item. Overall. 
you will also get to keep the crest stone as an item. You won't it won't stack up in your inventory, so don't worry about it uh, taking up a slot. You are nothing. Just make sure that as long as there's a crest stone and an enemy, you've got someone ready. Ready to intercept them. You underestimated me. If you keep your units to the side, you should be able to handle them without much of an issue. And I mean that in all seriousness. Goodness, did, did I not give her... She has no items. <sighs> the things I do sometimes. Anyway... I'll just progress without her, I don't really... Should I have held back? Now you'll notice that pink square was where the enemies will start to head towards if they have a crest stone. Shouldn't be too much of a problem if you've been paying a lot of attention to who has what stone. Actually, I'm not going to move Ingrid right there, because there are a bunch of archers. That is a task best left for a cavalier. That will be the start of the unit running away, because he's already got what he needed. That would be really bad if you don't have a way to catch him. Fortunately, in this case, if you've got a really good long-range fighter, like someone knows Meteor because their black magic, or not their black magic, their reason skill is high enough, you can just drop a Meteor and cover. Normally, I would have Bernadetta take care of him, but you probably saw that I forgot to equip her with any item at all whatsoever. Which was a stupid decision on my part, and one that I will rectify immediately because it would be a really funny walkthrough if I didn't. Also, I should also point out that you cannot charge up the middle unless there's a you, you've got a flyer. There will be this little stand in the way. Not a stand, but a, a rubble. And it's actually elevated. I'll just twist the map. So, it's just a lot of rubble. You can't actually rush up there. You're going to have to go over up one of two places to the side. The left or the right. 
The mark of nobility. Oh. beneath me now I can start moving up towards the enemy commander which was previously not an option simply due to the fact that I was not properly aligned if I chose to rush down the middle you're going to have to take one of two entrances to the side again there's nothing wrong with that Now this assassin-like enemy is a bit of a threat because he can poison your units. Fortunately, a little help from your white mage, in this case Linhart, should help things if they get too dangerous. Wait. I can't don't, wait to challenge you. Don't mind him. Literally, don't mind him. Once your enemies have been dwindled down or you've picked a path to cross, keep in mind that you have very little choice but to confront that enemy assassin slash commander just now. He's not really the main commander. Because the moment you get into the enemy commander's range, he's going to fight you. Now, spoiler alert, I'm just going to take out the commander ignore that final mage. Professor... I will intrude. Now the good news about the enemy commander, as you've probably realized at this point, is... They do not share your the lo same level or items or even skills that you had when they were in your party. If they were ever were in your party. Uh, problem is... If they were significantly weaker, they, are, they now got a huge strength boost and now pose a problem. But that is the conflict in the Holy Tomb in a nutshell. Really, just protect as many crest stones as you can. This is one of your few places to get a knowledge gem, if you didn't already get one. And if you properly protect the stones and take your time picking off the enemies, use Gambit for the beasts, you should have no trouble eventually taking on the command. Mander herself. Well, that was the Conflict in a Holy Tomb walkthrough in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe if you liked it. There will be more like this in the future. And this is the end of the first climax, so there will be the videos that come after this will now either be house specific or route specific. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you.